Welcome back to Your Legislation, and we're here today with Mr. Terry Gooden, and he is the legislator for District 66, Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. It's good to be here, Debbie. Thank you okay. for the invite. You're welcome. We always love having people come in because the more we can educate the public, right. the better decisions they can make. Well, you're very, it's a very good point. I'm going to point this out as well. Of course, Indianapolis is the center of government for the state of Indiana. In southern Indiana, we don't always get the news uh, from the General Assembly, so what you're doing is very right. important. And, uh, oh, thank you. It's, uh, it's quite odd because as a, in my other profession, I'm a school superintendent, and I was walking through the elementary school, and one of the young kids came up to me the other day and uh, asked me how Governor Bashir was doing. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, they watch the news, you know, and this all comes out of Louisville or areas, so it, it, was, right. it was quite funny. So. Well, yeah, we try to because you can't make a decision on whether you like a bill that's in Indiana unless you know what that bill is. Good point. And then what's entailed in it. Right. And one of the things we were talking about earlier before you, we started all this, we, we asked him what got you into this. Who, who inspired you to be a government servant or what event? inspired you to be a government you know that's a that's a great question Debbie and, I, and I'll probably say this is a I'll just take off all of the terminology except for the word servant uh, and I got that servant mentality from my grandparents uh, my grandfather was a union coal miner in Harlan Kentucky oh wow and yeah so those Kentucky roots go back deeply and on both sides of the family so uh, he was a union coal miner there in Harlan Kentucky and he was always involved in what was going on in the community when we came moved to Indiana. He was always involved, no matter what it was, whether it was uh, helping out uh, with the Little League or whether it was uh, being a part of trying to fix the sidewalk in the, in the town. So I got that servant's, um, I'm going to say a servant's heart. I got that the uh, servitude part from my grandparents. And my grandmother was, of course, always by his side when he was serving. Yeah. So. Yeah, you, yeah, if you're from the South, if you get one part of the family into it, the whole group is there, right, you know, right. mom and dad. You know, so. I think that might have been part of the strategy. They knew if they asked Grandpa to come and do something, they, <laughs> they, they got, got the whole group. <laughs> Everybody came along, you know. Well, that's good, though. That's good to know. Because it is. It gets more done that it way. It is. You're right. You're so right. that's that's cool. Yeah. Southern Kentucky is really a good place. So yeah, it's, I, it's a beautiful place. That's where I'm from. So. All right. All right. So we so, have. Yeah, we have to cover that. The same ancestry there. That's huh? right. Maybe not the same ancestors, but the same ancestry. I don't know. We have to might. About, might not ought to look back too far. Okay. You never well, know. If we'll leave from, it right at grandparents' If then. you're from southern in Kentucky, yeah. most people are related down there well, somehow. I've heard that. <laughs> I'll just say I've so, heard that. Yeah, I've, somehow. Yeah, yeah. So we want to talk about an overview of the legislation that's been going on in the House. This, mm -hmm. Of course, everything's switched from the House bills that you all have done have gone to the Senate, and the Senate bills have come to the House. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so we are officially at the midpoint of the legislative right. session uh, in Indianapolis. So uh, we have finished up with the House bills, as you as you pointed out. Uh, they're going over to the Senate. They're working on that. Uh, not to go through the civics lesson here, but we send our bills oh, there. It's good. The, well, the Senate sent their bills to us mm -hmm. now, so we're working on Senate bills. Uh, we're moving quickly through uh, the legislative session. As you know, this is the short session, the non-budget right. session in the state of Indiana. So, But really, it seems the theme that's dominating and, and has dominated uh, the uh, legislative uh, proposals of the last two or three years has been the education part of that. And of course, I know a lot of folks say, well, if you ask anybody, the top three or two choices that if you say what's the most important thing that goes on in the state of Indiana or any state, education always uses, usually tends to kind of come to the top of that. So, uh, so, so for right, then maybe education is uh, probably one of the reasons why that we uh, are there and dealing with all those aspects. So. Well, that's something you need to deal with. I mean, the kids that are coming up are going to be the ones taking care of us. Exactly. When we get older, and we want to make sure that they have a good education. You know, very selfishly, so. I want the, that uh, next generation to get the best possible jobs they can get, okay. making the most mm -hmm. money, because at some point, I want to be able to draw Social Security. <laughs> 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 and they pay into that. So that's that's very important. And, uh, you know, in Indiana, it's been, uh, uh, it's been a... Um, Oh, the, we'll say that there's been an educational renaissance that's taken place in the state of Indiana over the last decade. Now, there's two competing factors to that, and uh, one of those groups uh, of of the uh, uh, of the folks you're talking about education are those folks who see education as an investment in the state and in the community. And the other side of that, or the other group, is one of those that see education maybe as a uh, cost or a liability to the state of Indiana. Now I'm going to be very blunt and say I belong to the group that says that education is an investment in our state and trying to make sure that we're investing in those children so they can get those great jobs and pay into that so we can all uh, be better off as we move forward. So, 
Well, that our kids are important. They are important. That is they very are. important. Not to use a worn-out cliche, but the kids are the future. They, they are. And as we move forward, we've got to make sure we keep that in mind. And you know, the the whole role of of government and quality of life, education is a part of that. And we got to make sure that in education, we were we are uh, putting out uh, boys and girls that can get a good job, have the skills to be able to go to work, get a good paying job so they can raise their families, right. or be prepared to go into that next level of education, whether that be college or whatever right. they decide to do. Well, you, you touched on the quality of life. Mm -hmm. So what what do you see about the quality of life in the state of Indiana? You know, right now, Indiana's kind of taking it on the chin in the quality of life as we're looking through different surveys, uh, seeing different results from magazines. I'm not sure if it was U.S. News and World Report said that uh, Indiana ranks 46th in the nation for quality of life. So. We've got to figure out, hey, we've got to figure out how to lift that up. You know, in the last decade or so, Indiana has risen to the top as being a very business-friendly state, and I'm proud to say that I've been a part of the legislation to make that happen, but we've also got to remember that a part of that, we've got to figure out how to, how to make the quality of life better. And right now, maybe we've not been necessarily paying attention to that, and in the surveys and, and all the results uh, that uh, the pundits are saying are, are, are really pointing that out. So we've got to figure out little ways to make the quality of life in Indiana much better. And, uh, you know, just some, there's some very simple things we can do. Uh, right. Some of the proposals I've really supported and been pushing, number one of those is to try to eliminate the female tax. As we all know, there's certain uh, things that females need as they go through their life, and we should probably eliminate the sales tax from those products if those are something that they need as they go through. Also, we talk about uh, something simple as uh, eliminating the sales tax on breastfeeding uh, products. Right now, we're encouraging folks to be in the workforce. We want those uh, working mothers to be in the workforce, but guess what? That's expensive. They can't, and it is very expensive. They can't be there if they can't have the milk to be able to send back to who's taking care of the child. So right. that is something very simple. We eliminate that sales tax. Unfortunately, it didn't get enough uh, support to pass, but are those silver bullets that's going to make the quality of life immediately better in the state of Indiana? No. But those are just little incremental things that we can look at and things we can do to try to help boost that along with education as we all know education is really the driver that helps the quality of life in states and what makes those those uh, uh, people's lives better and we've got to make sure that we're investing in education make sure we're spending enough money to make sure that that investment works out so right now there's a really big debate uh, Debbie in, in Indiana about what that education spending looks like so right. uh, that, that's that's the debate I don't I'm I'm an educator right off the bat I'm a school superintendent I'll tell you that I can't tell you as a school superintendent or as a legislator that I'll tell you that the state of Indiana is spending enough money on education or they're not spending enough. But what I will say is that the state of Indiana is not spending it probably in the best opportunities in the, in the right way. So, you, you see that there may be different ways that it can be handled. There's some discretionary uh, uh, opportunities there that we can look at and uh, not to and, and not to be uh, negative on this part of it, but we look at just uh, the testing uh, fiasco that's taken place in the state of Indiana. So now in the last three years, the state of Indiana has decided to have a hold harmless on the testing uh, as far as evaluating teachers and all that. Well, that's $110 million that the state of Indiana has literally just thrown in the trash can because those test scores are not valid. Um, another another uh, problem that we've been dealing with is the virtual charter uh, programs in the state of Indiana, and uh, it's been all over the news in, in the Indianapolis area about the $68 million that was uh, pilfered from the state of Indiana going to, to uh, two virtual charter schools that were giving false documents and false documentation uh, about the number of students they had in their school. So some of those things we can tighten up, and we start spending that money correctly in the right way, then we, we may be spending the right amount of money in the state of Indiana. We've you would like sure to see that. more accountability. Much more accountability, and I don't think that accountability is there right now. Well, that's something for you to work on. It isn't is, it? absolutely. And I have been working on that. So. <laughs> yes, you have. Yeah. So, now is there anything else we need to let people know before we let them, let them go? I mean, I know you're going to be back. I will be back, and I, I just appreciate the opportunity to come and, uh, and, and talk to you today and try to get some, some information out there as we move forward. The legislative session will end about the middle of October, right. somewhere around the 15th or so. So at that point, we'll know what's passed and what's not passed. Uh, right now, so there's some still some uh, policies that are kind of bouncing right. around that are still alive. But I just uh, want to say to folks to reach out to me on my email account. Uh, they're at the House of Representatives, h66 at in.gov. Uh, I answer all my emails personally, so I'll make 
sure I get back to those folks. And uh, the only dumb question that someone sends to me is the one they don't send because I want to make sure because that it doesn't have an answer. You're right. You're exactly <laughs> right. I want to make sure people are informed, and I want to know what the what the people's thoughts and philosophies are about things that are going on, right. and so I can have a better informed decision on how to vote on those as they come through the house. Now that's something we didn't cover mm -hmm. because when when they do a bill. And bills are coming up. They can go online and they can look in that on the Indiana House site. They can. they can look at the bills, and then if they want to see something different in the bill, or if they don't like the bill, they need to call or send you an email. Emails are better because they're busy; they're not going to answer the phone. <laughs> but email's good for them to call with a solution. What is their suggestion on right. that bill if they don't like the way it's written? Right. Well, so, I, uh, and I know you always point this out is I, I don't mind people complaining to me, but what I'd rather pref what I would prefer is that they would give me solutions. Yes. To to hey options. Here's I don't like this bill or I don't like what's in this bill. Have you tried this? Yes. And those are always the best because uh, believe it or not, all of the ideas and philosophies that pass through the state of Indiana and become laws actually started in someone's mind as yes. an idea. Yes. So those are the w that's the way you make a real change and a real difference in the state. So I, I appreciate those comments. I'll take them all. I love them all, and I'll respond to all of them as well. But uh, it's important that. that uh, folks keep in touch and I want to encourage that please keep in touch with me as the legislative session goes on awesome we'll make sure they have your email at the bottom here and they can let you know what they think about those bills and give you some options and solutions perfect so perfect. well thanks again for being here absolutely it's an honor to be here Debbie and look forward to seeing you in the future You're, well, well we'll have you back soon all right thank you well we appreciate our sponsors for making it possible to put this show on and as always we appreciate you watching <laughs>